Nearly 21 years after it took place, WrestleMania 19 is widely regarded as one of the greatest WrestleMania events to ever take place. Some would even argue that it is the greatest. The case can certainly be made as the show is home to a collection of great matches. Shawn Michaels vs. Chris Jericho, Vince McMahon vs. Hulk Hogan, Stone Cold Steve Austin vs. The Rock, and Kurt Angle vs. Brock Lesnar. Overall, the show is watchable from top to bottom. Even the women's match was good, and for this era of WWE, that is certainly saying something. It was straight to the point featuring 9 made card matches with a runtime of 4 hours. This show features some odd and controversial decisions like Undertaker being booked in a throwaway handicap match with A-Train in the Big Show. If that was not enough, throw in the fact that Triple H buried Booker T following a racially insensitive storyline that would have been the perfect time for a Cinderella babyface to get a much needed win. To top it all off, Steve Austin was hospitalized and treated for a serious illness just mere hours before the show. Kurt Angle broke his neck a few weeks prior at No Way Out 2003, and lastly, Brock Lesnar nearly paralyzed himself due to the most iconic botch in wrestling history. With all those factors in the mix, you get the most chaotic, wild WrestleMania of all time. WrestleMania 19 was held on March 30th, 2003 at Safeco Field in Seattle, Washington. The theme song for the event was Crack Addict by Limp Bizkit, marking the band's second WrestleMania theme. Previously, they lent the song My Way to be the theme for WrestleMania 17. Fred Durst was here live to perform Crack Addict and also sing Undertaker to the Ring in one of WrestleMania's most underrated entrances of all time. Nothing screams 2003 more than Fred Durst performing in front of 54,000 WWE fans as the American Badass rides his motorcycle down to the ring. Let's focus on Undertaker for a moment. By this point, Undertaker had some great matches under his belt at WrestleMania in years past, like WrestleMania 14 vs. Kane and WrestleMania 18 vs. Ric Flair. There were some bad ones too, like his matches vs. Giant Gonzalez and King Kong Bundy. It was clear that Vince didn't always know what to do with him, and this rendition of WrestleMania was the prime example of that notion. Granted, this was not the Undertaker that would defend his streak every year at Mania like it was the most prestigious title, but man, this was American Badass Undertaker, who was the undisputed champion not long ago and had an amazing feud with Brock Lesnar in late 2002. With so much talent like Eddie Guerrero and Chris Benoit just casually on the undercard here, surely WWE and Co. could have found a better spot for Undertaker's match. Instead of a marquee one-on-one -on -one match, Taker was scheduled for a tag team match at WrestleMania with Nathan Jones, a most wanted criminal turned WWE wrestler, now Hollywood star. The duo were set to take on the Big Show and A-Train. Bro, this match belonged on a random Raw in 2002 on the undercard of Triple H humping a mannequin. To make matters worse, Nathan Jones was so bad in the ring and showed so little interest in being a wrestler that the match was changed at the last second to a handicap match with Taker facing Big Show and A-Train by himself. WWE shot an angle where Show and A-Train beat up Jones in the back, and then later on Jones would make a run in to help Taker win the match. To boil it down for you, Undertaker received this grandiose all-time great WrestleMania entrance with one of the hottest rock stars in the world at the time screaming him down to the ring just so he can face Big Show and A-Train on the second match of the card. Undertaker's match and placement on the card is an argument people often use to dispute this show's status as a top WrestleMania. I just think there was too much good on this card that outweighs the negatives. Undertaker certainly deserved better and would be given much better at the show of shows for the next decade to follow. Undertaker, Big Show, and A-Train gave Nathan Jones personalized ring lessons for weeks leading up to the show to help prepare him for the match, and it failed. If you can't learn anything from Undertaker and Big Show, simply put, wrestling isn't for you. This mess with The Undertaker only scratches the surface of the chaos that surrounds this entire event. In other news, John Cena appeared on the pre-show, what was then known as Sunday Night Heat to engage in a rap battle against cardboard cutouts of rap superstars Jay-Z and Fabulous. This marked Cena's first ever WrestleMania appearance in what was a goofy segment that Cena stated taught him a lot. Originally, Cena's rap battle was supposed to take place on the main show as it was advertised to for weeks in the buildup. Both Jay-Z and Fabulous were supposed to appear live and rap against Cena. Honestly, if this went the way it was planned, this segment could have been one of the best segments ever and really added a boost to the show. Imagine Prime Jay-Z going back and forth with John Cena in a WWE ring. It almost feels surreal to even think at one point that was supposed to happen. Jay-Z pulled out of the event a few weeks prior due to other commitments. Now, it's likely that Jay-Z did not want to risk damaging his public image if Cena, a wrestler and not a legitimate musician, had outperformed him. 
Now, Fabulous is a different case, as seemingly Sienna did not take kindly to Fabulous's backing out literally the day of the event. Granted, Fabo was arrested for gun charges just six days prior, but was released on bail. Now, that didn't seem to matter, as the rapper was actually at the show, and according to Sienna, backed out of the event after the two rehearsed. Sienna would cut a pretty basic promo on Jay-Z's cutout, playing off of his hit song, O3, Bonnie and Clyde. However, Cena then lashed out with a scathing rap towards Fabulous. So scathing that he calls one Vincent Kennedy McMahon to become irate after a line where Cena said, quote, He's just a bad idea, like the XFL. This no doubt hit a sore spot with McMahon, as the XFL was his passion project that failed to get off the ground in 2001. According to former writer Dave Lagana, McMahon called him into his office and demanded that Lagana get Cena's raps approved by Vince before he utters them on TV. Cena targeted Fabulous by mentioning his arrest for guns, saying, quote, They didn't arrest you for guns, it's because your raps suck. Cena even said that Fab had a, quote, mangina, and that he, quote, showed up and tapped out after hearing me in rehearsal. Man, I don't know about you, but that felt personal. A featured match on the night would have Triple H defend his World Heavyweight Championship against Booker T in what was a substitute match of sorts. The match was put together on short notice after Booker won a battle royal on Raw by last eliminating The Rock to earn his opportunity. According to Bruce Prichard, as he recalled on his podcast, Something to Wrestle, Triple H was supposed to face and drop the title to Scott Steiner at this event. Steiner had made his debut for the company at Survivor Series a few months prior and had unsuccessfully challenged for the championship at the Royal Rumble and No Way Out. Steiner was allegedly supposed to get his win and big moment at WrestleMania, but according to Pritchard, he was injured, which had affected his match quality. The prior matches between the two men were so underwhelming that Creative made the switch and went with Booker T instead. This storyline is so controversial that it deserves its own video, which I will produce later on. I'll give you the footnotes version for the sake of this video. Triple H and Booker T engaged in an extremely controversial and edgy storyline that featured several racial undertones. Triple H stated that Booker T was meant to dance and perform for people like him, and that people with nappy hair like Booker didn't fit the build of what a world heavyweight champion should look like. Yikes. And to make matters worse, the underdog babyface that had been talked down to in the weeks leading up to the show lost clean. Not just clean, but Booker lost after a near 30 second pause between a pedigree and the cover from Triple H. Granted, the 18 minutes leading up to the pinfall was a fantastic wrestling match, but the finish to the match has been the topic of controversy for two decades. As far as where Booker T stands on the matter, he has gone on record several times in several interviews to state that he was not bothered by either the storyline or the finish of the match. He was only concerned about the size of the paycheck he received for working in a main event match and has stated that it was the best paycheck of his career. This match is by far and away the most controversial topic surrounding this event. It is the biggest black eye and the most common defense used by people who insist that this WrestleMania cannot be in the greatest mania of all time conversation. Hell, if Booker T is fine with it, what more can I really say? Triple H pedigreeing Booker then running across the street to grab a cup of coffee before scoring the pinfall is one of the weirdest booking decisions of all time. And in my opinion, Booker should have gotten his moment in the sun here. WWE could have always gave the belt right back to Triple H a month later if that's really what they wanted. This match rightfully causes uproar amongst fans and is no doubt deserving of the criticism it and the storyline receive. Next up is The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin wrestling for the third and final time at WrestleMania and was a match that would actually wind up being Austin's retirement match. That was until he wrestled Kevin Owens in the main event of WrestleMania 38. Austin and Rock were supposed to main event the show, rightfully so as they were by and large the biggest stars in WWE. That was just not meant to be as Austin was hospitalized the day before the event due to an extreme anxiety attack and an accelerated heartbeat. Stone Cold Steve Austin went on record to say that he checked himself out of the hospital earlier than the doctor's recommendations to even make it to the match. So far we've talked about the absolute blunder that was John Cena's expected rap battle with Jay-Z and Fabo, Undertaker's mess with Nathan Jones, the disaster that was Triple H and Booker T, and on top of all that, the biggest star in the history of the business almost died the day before headlining the event. You will be hard pressed to find a crazier backstage environment for a WrestleMania. And all the while, Hulk Hogan and Vince McMahon actually had a great build and a great match on the show. So did Shawn Michaels and Chris Jericho for that matter. After Austin broke his neck at the hands of Owen Hart in 1997, 
He knew his days in the ring were numbered, and he even went to Vince and wanted to retire sometime in 1999, to which Vince asked him to give him some more time as he needed Austin when he took the company public on Wall Street. Austin obliged and ended up wrestling for nearly two more years after missing a full year with a neck injury. He stated this during an interview with Jim Ross, continuing by saying that Triple H and The Rock had banner years while he was out, and he felt like WWE didn't really need him at the time. That notion became more prevalent in Austin's mind when he was booked to lose to Brock Lesnar on an episode of Raw in 2002 that led to him walking out of the company. Austin did agree to come back for this one match with The Rock. While the two had a good match, it just wasn't as good as their 15 or 17 matches from an in-ring standpoint. Lastly, what ended up being the main event of the evening, Brock Lesnar vs. Kurt Angle for the WWE Championship. You all know the story about what took place during the match. That is the most infamous botch in the history of professional wrestling when Brock Lesnar attempted to execute a shooting star press on Angle and landed straight on the top of his head. Somehow, miraculously, Brock walked away with merely a concussion. And if you go back and watch the footage, you can see when Brock is celebrating with the title, he has a faraway look in his eye. The lights are on, but no one was home. Lesnar has stated that he remembers nothing from that night, and Angle has talked about just how bad a shape Lesnar was in. To make matters worse, this match also nearly did not take place, thanks to a scary injury suffered by Kurt Angle at No Way Out 2003. During a match with Brock Lesnar and Chris Benoit, Brock attempted to Irish whip Angle, and thanks to a botched execution, Angle's neck snapped when he hit the turnbuckle, resulting in four broken vertebrae in his neck. Angle stated that his neck was in such bad shape that he couldn't even curl five pounds at the gym the next day. The injury was so bad that WWE even tossed around the idea of having Benoit win the title from Angle and defend it against Brock at WrestleMania. Of course that didn't happen because Angle somehow managed to find a doctor that cleared him to compete under the condition that he gets surgery to fix his neck immediately following WrestleMania. It's a move that WWE just simply could not get away with nowadays. This was long before strict drug policies and injury prevention measures were introduced to the WWE. This WrestleMania is easily one of the most fascinating of all time and certainly would have been remembered a lot differently had Brock Lesnar paralyzed himself in the ring or something even worse happened. The buy rate for this show was a disaster at 560,000 in comparison to the surrounding WrestleManias. WrestleMania 18 did 880,000, while WrestleMania 20 did 1 million buys. This was partially because of the lack of a buildup for some of the big matches combined with the chaos. Thanks to the chaos, Vince and Hogan's match was what the show ended up being built around. Not out of ego by the two men, but literally because every other big match on the card had so much uncertainty. The two were featured on the poster and the DVD cover. Somehow with Kurt Angle breaking his neck weeks before the show, Jay-Z and Fabulous no showing, Triple H embarking on a racially insensitive storyline with Booker T, Undertaker being forced to have an undercard handicap match, Steve Austin nearly dying the night before, and Brock Lesnar suffering the worst botch of all time, WrestleMania 19 has lived on to become known as one of the greatest, if not the greatest WrestleMania of all time. Well, that has been the video. Thank you guys all so much for tuning in. I'll talk to you on the next one. Have a great day. Peace.